Welcome back and thank you for staying with us tonight. According to kidneyfund.org, kidney disease is the ninth leading cause of death in the United States with over 80,000 people waiting for a kidney on the transplant list. Tonight, we introduce you to one Bozeman woman who is fighting against being one of those numbers and her amazing support team that's doing everything they can to find her a kidney. I didn't expect anything like this. I had gotten through my first pregnancy just fine and um, it was just random. Looking at Ginger Bokma, you can tell she's a loving wife and mother and an amazing RN. What you may not know is that she's been battling kidney disease for the last nine years. I had my daughter 10 years ago and at my one year appointment to follow up with that, um, uh, my doctor noticed my lab work was off and she said, mm, that's strange, your, your kidney stuff is off. And I'm like, well, that's strange. So she sent me to an internal medicine doctor that followed me for a couple of months and she said, no, this is something else we're dealing with here. We need to send you to a nephrologist. Over the years, Ginger has seen herself getting sicker and sicker. Everything they've tried has made no difference in her health, so Ginger's doctor said it was time for a kidney transplant. That's when we started the process of um, getting me approved, which took about three to four months. It's quite a process just to get yourself approved before you can even start testing other people. Besides visiting every doctor out there, Ginger also had to spend a full eight-hour day in Seattle getting tests since there's no transplant center here in Montana. So it's a very specialized sort of therapy, um, and the uh, physicians that are doing these procedures, uh, waiting from the transplant surgeons to the transplant nephrologies, are special, have specialized training and accreditation in this. Uh, the pharmacists that are involved in the process have specialized training with these uh, immunosuppressive and other medications. The nurses that are involved with coordination of, um, even once you've left the hospital, coordinating your care, have lots of experience with these things. Once Ginger was cleared for a transplant, they began testing people to see if their kidneys would be a match, a task that was just as intense as Ginger's. So the first phone call is just kind of questions about any prior history of you know blood pressure issues in pregnancy, preeclampsia, kidney stones, kidney infections. It didn't take much actually to get knocked off the list. Dr. Sean Gillis, an OBGYN that works with Ginger in labor and delivery at Bozeman Health Deaconess Hospital, She's known Ginger for years and has been with her since she found out about her kidney failure. Even before Ginger progressed to this state, Dr. Gillis wanted to help. I remember we were just kind of hanging out on labor and delivery and again, just I was just kind of asking how are things, where are things at with what's going on and she said it's progressing and at some point I'm probably going to need a kidney transplant and I said well if and when you get to that point let me know. I would totally be willing to be tested to see if that would be an option. There were more like Dr. Gillis at the hospital that wanted to help Ginger. Becky Walters, a lactation coordinator, picked up the phone along with her brother and father-in-law. Transplant coordinator said that it would probably take five years before before I would probably find a deceased donor. So we're, that's really why we're hoping to find me a living donor because it could be a long wait for me to find a deceased donor. There were at least 19 people that Ginger even knows about that called the organ donor line, and only a handful have made it past the first phone call, including Dr. Gillis. Emotional. Um, sorry. Um, I guess from my perspective, it was it was very natural for me to to offer that. It really di it did not take any thought. It was it was more it was not in my from my head. It was literally from my heart, and. Um, and just her just expressing gratitude for that. It was pretty emotional. We've had a few emotional conversations, <laughs> you might imagine. <laughs> as Dr. Gillis and the few other potential donors filled up their tubes to be tested as possible matches, the nurses and doctors at the hospital are reaching out to the community to help Ginger, whether you can donate a kidney yourself or just by donating to the GoFundMe page. I just, I really want to empower people um, to give in any way they can and to support people that do choose um, to transplant. Giving in any way you can will help Ginger live her best life and continue to bring new life into our world. I feel like I'm a pretty normally happy, energetic person, so, so I definitely would like to be able to keep doing that and keep being a nurse and be well and, and just be a good mom and a good wife and a good friend. And yeah, that's important for sure. <laughs> In Bozeman, Morgan Davies, MTN News.
Now, Dr. Gillis and the other potential donors hope to find out if they're a match for Ginger by the end of December. On our website, you can find a link to Ginger's GoFundMe page as well as the number for the organ donation line. We toss things over now.